You all know this universe, alpha males and females in huge metal armor, BDSM enthusiasts, flat earthers, space hulks and Jesus himself. Today we're gonna talk about Dawn of War, one of the best games about this universe. But how do we play it, you would ask? Sit down, my young fellow guardsmen. Prepare a cup of tea and your prayers to the Emperor, because we're gonna dive into this game like a chainsword in a heretic. At start you should capture the points, a lot of points. Then you should build generators in order to get more advanced machines and units that capable of destroying whole planets in a blink of an in-space marine eye. Once you will be done with the recruitment of the willing, you should proceed to execution of your main tasks. Burn the heretic, annihilate the Xenos and cut down the mutant. Your righteous soldiers will appear as the squads, because there are so many loyal servants of the Emperor that we could not count them one by one. But beware, not every single soldier has a strong will, so you should keep an eye for them. There is always a better way to die with a good morale. We, my fellow guardsmen, can control not only human species, but also filthy Xenos and even despicable Chaos forces. Heresy, you would say, you can't do exterminators if you don't know where and when you should do it, right? Let's start with your comrades, Imperial Guards. As you know, there are a lot of regiments in Imperium of Men, but in Dawn of War we could only command Cadian, Kronos and Kauravan regiments. Unfortunately, we will not see that Corps of Krieg. Ah, what a soldiers, I fought with them once. Anyways, first tier infantry without upgrades is one of the weakest in the game, low damage and morale, short range too. In order to stop your troops from retreating, we should, um, you know... If you will not serve in combat, then you will serve on the firing line. Don't forget to call your command unit, pretty strong at start and could tank a lot of damage. You should get upgrades as soon as possible to give your guardsmen at least a chance to fight back heavy infantry. But to be fair, Imperial Guards is one of the most snowballing factions. If they will take an upper hand, it's nearly impossible to do something against them. You even won't be able to approach them if your troops have no resist to throwbacks. But don't forget, guardsmen, you have an armor support. Human vehicles are pretty specialized, but at start they will do. Just hold on till you will get your lemon rosses and, in my opinion, the strongest relic unit, Baneblade. Till that you could use your long-range artillery to hold enemies back. Once you will train your Kassarkins and Ogrins to support your armor, the match is pretty over for your enemies. As the final touch, you could use orbital bombardment. Don't be afraid of a friendly fire, your soldiers will gladly die for the Emperor. And let's summarize this faction. Weak at start, but one of the strongest in late game. Has only a few options how to fight, mostly all goes to your heavy armor. The main difficulty is that we have a lot of problems with enemy vehicles. Basically, we have only heavy weapons team and sentinels, that's it. But still overall strong and solid faction. Orcs are basically just the British persons. Who's the biggest orc here? We've never had a good open. Wake up, boys! It's What's time for fight! It? Everything is ready, boss. <laughs> Damn you, is in for a good stomping. This is gonna be the best fight of their miserable lives. When I played this game as a kid, I didn't really like this faction. And oh boy, how was I wrong. Greenskins, orcs, crocs, wah, hawks, the boys, probably the most fun faction to play with. Your tactic is simple. Build the banners to get unique resource, wah, in order to build more advanced units and then just, you know, Kill the humies. Orcs have the biggest gun there is that will help you to do this. Big squads, strong commanders, additional tourists on the buildings, solid vehicles. They have my favorite tire free long range unit and armor choppers that will break walls with their heads. Same problem as with the guards. You have not that many options how to wage war. But do you really need them when you have these strong boys? Just keep your orc eye out for these banners. They are pretty important. Necron War are as dark and grim as their look. They don't use requisition, just need generators. And basically their gameplay concept is time-based. More capture points means faster production time. 
and their strongest weapon, the monolith, should be woken up. Their infantry unit probably is the strongest early unit in the game. They've got even more. Your commander, Necron Lord, temporarily could gain kinda god form, so they have kinda two relic units. Kinda. Here is the downside of this time concept. The further day goes, the later hour it gets. We will be gaining more and more power, but at some certain point, clock will drop to nil. Necrons have strong infantry, but their vehicles are wacky and there are almost none upgrades for their units. If you let guardsmen to get their bane blade and late infantry, if you let space marines get their terminators and land riders, this will be pretty much over. Remember, you should be flawless as time itself. Continue to push, don't stop before it's too late. Eldars, what can I say, my fellow guardsmen? Tricky and treacherous, hide and seek, hit and run, it's all about this filthy Xenos. Their units highly mobile and squishy. Tire 1 troops are weak, but we have invisible snipers and probably the strongest primary commander. Elders could build web portals and travel around the map. Same as the guardsmen and their bunkers, but here we could just hide them. Easy to play, hard to master faction. Usually I just try to get tire 3 infantry as soon as possible, and then will rush to their absurdly powerful fire prism tank. Their relic unit, Avatar of Cain, considered to be the weakest, but not the most useless. He could increase your troops population cap if being alive. Overall, I would not recommend to play Eldars if you're not into them. They require a lot of time investment in order to play good. Dark Eldars live in a famous castle and they like, you know, stuff. Kinda same as the regular Eldars, but their troops highly specialized. There are almost no units that could be used in any situations like other races have. Their vehicles not that tanky, but can give a punch. And they have kinda magic. To use it you should gather souls. Dark Eldars have fine commanders, but overall I think that they are not that strong. Regular Eldars have nice mobility and still a raw firepower in the late game, but here... Space Marines. This is your elite, my fellow guardsmen. Dudes in a huge armor that were created to exterminate all enemies of the Emperor. Most balanced faction among them all. Good, strong infantry for various roles, a lot of useful upgrades, good commanders, solid vehicles that could fit any combat situation, tire free devastators that could be dropped from the orbit. There are not much that I could say about this faction. Space Marines have it all. Probably the only problem that at start your infantry and its reinforcements are too expensive. Sisters of Battle are the supreme religious soldiers. Don't you dare be accused of heresy. They will burn you and then will hang you in their church as an example. In game they are kinda reskin of a space marines with a few changes. Main unit has only bolter and a flamethrower options and their relic unit is questionable in terms of effectiveness and vehicles are situational. But they have probably the best anti-vehicle squad in the game, have strong tire free melee unit, solid commanders and they snowballing probably even harder than the imperial guards. Paradox. Not that strong if we will look at their unit separately, but overall their kit is insanely solid. Now we're gonna talk about Chaos. Listen close, guardsmen. This is the main enemy of the Imperium. They have a lot of similarities with Space Marines, but also have demons. Overall very strong faction, lots of heavy infantry, good vehicles, anti-armor squad, invisible scouts, tire free demon unit has weapon against all types. Relic unit Bloodthirster is strong too. We have a different varieties of melee troops. As you could see, Chaos is strong and have tactics for almost any situation. But be beware of anti-demon squads, they could just melt your troops. And the last faction, Tau Empire. Technological and mostly ranged oriented units. If you let them shoot from the far and will not force your own game in melee combat, you are done. They have different battle suits, long range artillery and support tanks, and basically monsters. They are tech tree divided in two ways, advanced technologies or more brutal force. In first way you will get vehicles and upgrades for your range troops, but you won't get the beasts that could tank a lot of damage. Can't tell you what I prefer more. In 1v1 situations I would pick melee just to be more tanky. If I have an ally as a tower player I would pick distance tactic. I don't have some good conclusion or a guidance for you. 
my fellow guardsmen. Dawn of War is still an amazing game and I'm glad that I returned. It still holds up after all these years and I even haven't touched the mods. Try it for yourself, but don't forget, beware the alien, the mutant, the heretic.